Hey guys, Mark the Landlock Surfer here and today we're going to be doing a review video but the first thing I have to do is point out the shirt that I'm wearing. A little shout out to my friend, work for Avocados, Michael Regan. We had a little head-to-head -head contest over Instagram and I've entered three surf skate competitions and the only one that I've lost so far is my own contest. As part of the unconventional contest, the two judges went head to head and congrats to Michael, you ended up winning that. So as a result, I am wearing his shirt for my video here today, but I'm honored to do so. So let's get on to things. Today we're gonna be reviewing the Whitetail Skateboards by G Surf Skate. So this is a surf skate that was designed by a shaper um, based out of Canada and it's got a really unique design to it. So you can see there's two different setups you can use. There's standard one that has sort of a shorter 14 inch wheelbase but also up on the nose here you can see there's an angled setup where you can put CX trucks on there. So the Baiji Surfskate was designed with special intention. So there were two things that the shaper wanted to accomplish with this. One was to make a beginner friendly surf skate. So one thing you can see by using these front hole mounts is that it keeps it really low to the ground. You can see that it's almost probably one of the lowest surf skates that I've used. So if you're just starting out surf skating and are used to a standard skateboard or a longboard, this is going to be a lot easier to kick push. The other thing that it does is it creates a stable base. Um, so it's not going to be as, um, as loose feeling as a regular surf skate, but it's still going to let you pump. Um, so good kind of beginner transition board for people to get started with. Now, if you're using the angled holes and you've kind of grown out of that, you have the opportunity to use the other set of mounting holes here to use it as a regular surf skate with about a 14 and a half inch wheelbase. So I'm gonna give that a try today and to sort of test out the beginner properties, I'm gonna try using this switch because when I ride switch, it's very much as a beginner skill level. So let's have a go. All right, you guys are used to seeing me skate regular. Um, today we're gonna try getting a beginner's perspective, so you're gonna see me skating goofy. And I'm not very good, so this will be a good test of the beginner qualities of this surf skate. Okay, first off, this is definitely the most stable feeling board I've tried using Switch. Like, um, it just feels really comfortable. Like with that lifted nose, there's kind of a pocket for me to get my foot into. So I feel like I've got something that I can get some extra leverage. Huh, I tried this board first riding regular and I was kind of, when I'm used to a more divey, loose feeling surf skate, um, it didn't really feel like a board that would be a good fit for me, but now that I'm trying it switch as a beginner, I really see how it makes sense. So again, remember, I'm doing this switch, no judging. Up to this point, when I try and ride switch, I can only start by um, pushing Mongo. So I'm gonna try seeing if I can figure out with this nice stable board, if I can do a regular proper uh, kick push to get started. Um, see how it works out.
as I said, switch is still a learning in progress. But the kick push definitely felt better on this than on other surf skates. Kick turns there where I would have fallen on another surf skate. So the extra stability might make this useful for just getting the basics of learning some things where it's more carvy than a skateboard but less kind of dangerous than a regular surf skate for getting the basics of those. Anyway, interesting. Okay, that definitely, I can see from a beginner standpoint how that would be a really useful board to get started on. Uh, I felt a lot more stable on that board even though I could still pump it. So I found that I could still get enough range of motion to get pumping, but I didn't feel like I was going to bottom out or jackknife. Like I think it's actually impossible to jackknife on that board the way that the truck is angled. Um, no way to get wheel bite. So it felt really good like even the times where I thought I was gonna lose my balance I was able to regain it so I think there's something to say for that now you definitely don't get the full divey surfy feel that you would get from like a Yao or a Smooth Star um, it feels a bit tighter than when you have a regular CX setup you don't get the same range of motion it's almost like a really loose kind of carvy longboard or cruiser feeling so you can pump it but once you get to a certain level I think um, the setup on the nose the way it is right now is not going to be ideal so it's a really good um, learning board and then once you kind of get to a certain step in your progress you can move the trucks over to that regular setup and get the more kind of surf skate experience let's try it regular and see how it works out so i'm going back to to pumping regular not switch here and you can get a look at what that's like You can probably tell there I'm used to more lean when using CX trucks. When you have it mounted on the nose here, you don't get the same amount of lean. So sometimes when I'm really trying to dig into those turns, I'm finding it's not going as far as I want it to. It can go very fast though. That's one thing, you don't lose as much energy when you're pumping on this. So it's kind of like the Oxello board. Because it doesn't have as much lean, you can actually generate more speed.
last thing that I wanted to test out and highlight is that this board I feel could be a really good commuter board. The fact that it is pretty lightweight, it's low to the ground so it's easy to kick push, and you get really good energy return on your pumps because it isn't as loose and divey as other surf skates, means that you can pump this board for long distances and kick push through sections that are difficult to pump and you can take it a long way without getting too fatigued so as a commuter board if you're looking for something different than a long board or if you have terrain that's difficult to pump carve on a regular surf skate this could be just that right fit in the middle so in my opinion this board is for people who might be looking for a good commuter board it could be a good fit for people who are just starting to get into surf skating, who might have a background in longboarding. It's going to feel a little bit more comfortable starting out on something like this rather than going straight to a regular carver, um, especially because of that height difference. Also, if you have a standard skateboarding background and you're not sure about surf skating, this might have a more close feel to what you're used to to kind of ease your way into the sport. If you do have a lot of board sport experience and you're confident you're going to learn fast, you could probably skip the nose mounted setup and go straight to the regular surf skate setup. Yeah, it's going to be higher, but I think being able to learn how to pump with that divier setup is going to skip a few steps. This is really great for learning and just getting started. Um, but if you're someone with some surf skating background, you'd probably want to go to the regular setup. Because honestly, this board, when it's set up on its regular mechanism, can really shred. It's similar to um, my old video about my favorite mini shredder setup that used that little Sector 9 deck. And it can really rock. So next thing, part two review, it's worth checking out to see how this board works in those circumstances. I'm going to throw up a few clips here to show what this board can do in its standard setup because that's more suited to my riding style and really this board performed very well in that setup so if you're a more advanced surf skater uh, it's worth checking out so I'm going to throw up a link here so you can go check out review part two of the Whitetail by G Surf Skate. Thanks for watching guys.